Okay, now we conclude this week's show with a question and probably one that would have most of you totally stumped, which is the difference between plasma cutting and flame cutting. And Paul recently found out at the PP Group in Oldham. I'm here in Oldham. I'm at the PP Group. I'm with Peter McCabe. Peter, I want to find out from yourself and, and, and demonstrate to our audience the differences between plasma cutting, uh, flame cutting and using lasers as well, where you see the differences? It's a lot to do with the size of components that you're cutting. For instance, if on plasma, if we just look at 30 mil thick across the board, if we were cutting a plate that was say six metre by 1800, we would plasma cut it all the time because big area, it produces a lot quicker than a flame would. However, if the requirement were 60 mil by 30 mil, then we would put it on the flame because you get a squarer, cleaner cut with the plasma on uh, profiles that size. Because the machine's moving that fast, they tend to tip into the torch and cause damage. So it is. It is sorry. Yeah, so, so I was going to say then, where does laser then fit in in, in that? It's similar circumstances, just on the thinner gauges. On the thinner gauges. Okay. And with these kerf machines you've got here, you've got you've got flame cut and plasma cut. Yeah. Is the reason that you've got both of those on this same bed the fact that you have such diverse heights and thicknesses of materials and sizes of materials? Yeah, there's every chance that material we put on the plasma machine, it will also need flame cutting as well. The way the factory is designed, everything in this bay is carbon steel, whether it be water jet, laser, flame, plasma, there's only carbon steel in this bay. And then from the water jet side as well then, that's a fourth process. What's the restrictions with that or what's the opportunities with that for much bigger components? Um, it reduces the machining cycle that people have. Uh, items years ago that maybe would have needed flame cutting, some companies now will go to water jet, one, to reduce the heat and make it easier for machining, and two, because you get closer to the finished edge in the first place and you can reduce machining cycles by 10. So really, uh, and you practice all of these four processes here, don't you? Yes, we do. And everything's driven by our own software. We've been writing it for the last 20 years. So the, our software knows which components are best suited to which machines. Wow, brilliant. Okay, so there's a really good insight there into the differences between flame cutting, plasma cutting, uh, using lasers and also water jet. Can't forget to mention that they have the ultra sharp plasma here as well from Curve Developments and that just gives you, is that just a, bit, a better surface finish than the plasma? Yeah, it gives us the edge. On, uh, when we're offering uh, laser cut components and the laser beds are not big enough, we don't give them a laser component but it's not far off and we can go up to 12 metre by 3 metre which covers most of what plates available commercially. So Paul, what is the difference? Yeah, Paul, what's oh, did, the difference? Didn't you watch? Yes, did I did, but I want you to say. So it's all down to the thicknesses of materials, the types of materials that you're cutting, uh, illustrated here perfectly mm -hmm. in my <laughs> interview with um, Peter. So why not water jet everything? Well, I, I think that would probably come down to the cost of the machinery, because mm. you're right, water jet. They showed me an application there that was a metre in height that they'd water jet, they'd water jetted. So mm. Could it cut through your sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> no, probably not. But I, there's I, a fair usage policy. Uh, no, and I think the thing is for this, you get the difference between plasma and laser. It's a bit like the guide bush, non guide bush joke, I get yeah. probably. Yeah. But um, in, in all seriousness, this guy, this company has grown substantially. And one of the things mm. that's interesting in another video I did with him is they actually have a, uh, a maximum of what they call 5% book debt, which means. Uh, none of their customers have more than 5% of, of essentially their service, which mm. means if, there's, if they ever lose a customer, yeah. they've never lost yeah. a big part of their business. That doesn't mean they basket. don't stop growing their customers, mm. because if one goes up to seven or eight, they then grow the business to bring that back down to five. Very successful company. Yeah, that's a clever way of doing it. Mm. That, must be, that must be challenging. If somebody wants to quadruple their sales, really, you can't, you can't walk away well, from Well, they it. have done. They have really? done, because there's too much risk. They got <coughs> caught out with that. Uh, several years ago and now they've said if one goes up to 10 they'll go out and get more business and they'll bring that 10 back down to 5. It's quite interesting to hear Good that. Good idea. Mm. Mm. And it keeps people on the feet. Yeah. A little bit so of healthy you, competition. You need to go and get more business. No, but if you go and get more business, it'll bring you down because you, you haven't got much. Very true. Well, I wouldn't get book debt either because I never buy books. I don't think we should do a swap with these two again. They talk too much. They're like two ladies. Well, it's over now anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah.